Hotline League is brought to you by Open by HP. No. Yeah, I know. He's got an Omega Lol uh, profile icon. <laughs> Horizon is on the call. Horizon, where are you calling from? Uh, from Chile. From Chile. Nice. Hey, great to have you on. Uh, have you been on before? No, never. Okay. Uh, nice. I think we've had another Chilean caller before, but it's great to hear from you. Uh, what time is it there? Um, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Okay. Well, thank you for, for being up this late. What do you want to talk about on the show tonight? Well, um, I want to talk about like how I think that Riot not having the casting value on site is a disgrace for the scene, especially when you compare it to TIA. Not only that, but I also think that people saying that that's okay have no idea what this means for the scene and the owners. Okay, what does it mean for the scene and the owners? I mean, I'm not saying like, oh my god, League is dying, but I think if you're an owner, especially, for, let's say like Nature, and you're saying, okay, I paid 13 million to get in LCS, and now I'm seeing Riot not paying to have the casting talent on Korea, and I'm there like, hmm, why didn't I go to Overwatch League? Then I see the sponsorships, and I think the same. Then I see the price pool from TI, and I think, well, maybe I did, I just wrong, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, the the news is they like, they could not get into Dota, unfortunately. So even if they see the price pool, I think that's a place for them to be disappointed. But it's not like there's a a Dota franchise league, but I don't uh, know. Should we let Kelby just do his thing and then we can actually have a conversation about this? Before the Kelby rant, <laughs> okay. I just want to ask, I don't know what it is about Chilean callers just having like great impassioned points. I just don't know like what it is that, like why, why do you think Horizon that like, like it feels like other Latin American culture, uh, callers too. Like what is it about them that like you guys just have such great points? Passionate about esports, maybe. Yeah. I mean, like, because I'm from Chile and I'm an NA fan, it hurts even more because I'm from an away, a wild card year and it already sucks here. So seeing it suck everyone else, everywhere else is like, okay. <laughs> okay, indeed, yes. I That's... think it comes down to food. Like, Americans are really lazy. All right, whatever. Let's <laughs> let's not get into <laughs> this is borderline <laughs> offensive. Um, Kel, uh, Kelby, what is your take? You've been thinking about this. Uh, yeah, well, so I, I think I'm probably going to take a slightly different perspective on it than you guys might have. And like, I don't, I don't want to just do like a rant thing. So like, feel free. Cause I could just talk forever about stuff. Sure. Um, I'm kind of most concerned about the dialogue that's been going on here with franchising, because I think that Horizon is right. The The team owner's perspective is is very, very curious to me. It's, it's evident now to all of us, and through the post that happened tonight on the subreddit, that Riot is taking a more fiscally responsible, let's say, approach to how they're operating their esports business. Why is this change happening now? especially after the teams just bought in $10 million a piece into franchising. Uh, because that's an influx of revenue that they hadn't had up to this point. And certainly when you have people committing long-term to the success of this, and they, everybody wants to get their money back, right? That's, that's why they're here. They're not just doing it as like a charity donation. Like, you know, they, they see some business interest in this. It seems like a very, very weird and unfortunate time for these team owners that Riot Riot starts scaling back on things and, and putting less investment into the space. They're they're re they're reducing costs, as they said, without, as we've seen, any significant increase in revenue. So, so Kelby, what if what if the answer is, yeah. well, of course we're going to be more fiscally responsible. We just got ten new partners. We need to make these guys money, and if we uh, keep spending money like we have in the past. There's no profit to share with them, and they're going to be dissatisfied. Yeah, for sure. So are they set up on a profit share model or a revenue share model? Because obviously that would affect things, right, um, as far as what you're looking for. And we're Can we're you explain? Because I think a lot of people won't understand the right. – 
So if you're on a revenue share model, then it's in the team's interest for Riot to not scale back these things and to keep them the way that there are so that the property is more attractive to drive more revenue to the league. If you're on a profit share model, then yes, that argument can be made that in scaling back our costs, we get closer to break even um, because we're spending right now more than we're making. Um, so cutting back on costs is actually more important to, to you getting a cut of something as opposed to a revenue share model where in the team's best interest, maybe not in Riot's profitability interest, uh, you know, like the teams would just want things to stay as big as possible so that sure. there's more sponsor money. But, th but the thing is, Travis, is that trying to be fiscally responsible, uh, like you need to generate some revenue to go along with this cutting of costs, which we just haven't seen anything of to this point and I'm curious and have expressed many times on this show my disappointment with their seemingly lack of effort in trying to do anything to garner revenue. The BAM Tech deal was a complete failure. They like Twitch was an apparent and ready partner that went to Overwatch, did this really awesome thing that's making the money is they're paying a shit ton to Activision Blizzard for it that Riot passed on and they're not doing anything in sponsorships. I can promise you considering my job is sponsorship sales in this industry that Riot has a very very attractive inventory to brands that would love to be sponsors of this property in the space. It's not like Overwatch which had zero broadcast history up to this point was able to go out and evangelize so much better to these brands that they were like, you know what? We've heard this pitch from Riot before, and we didn't really get it, but now, Overwatch League, we think this is our entry point into sponsoring esports leagues. No. Riot has had these opportunities to generate revenue around their league, and they've had them for a very, very long time. And you have a history built out, you have narratives, you have identified properties, star players with much greater reach and social followings than what you see in Overwatch, and you're not making any effort to get it done. It doesn't exist. So if you are now, as you've stated publicly, focusing on running a more fiscally responsible property, why aren't you trying to generate any revenue? Why are you just cutting costs? Because as a team owner, if I was still a team owner in the LCS, that would really piss me off. I don't know what the communications have been like between Riot and the team owners about this. But w what's going on? What's the plan? To chime in slightly, the assumption that Riot is not attempting to generate more revenue as opposed to just cutting costs probably isn't true. But the Where success... is it then, Mark? The success it's not of it. hard to go out and sell these deals. You have very attractive inventory, as I've identified. Success, I know for a fact that and wait, attempt are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know for a fact that there are brands that have tried and want to sponsor LCS very badly. They have these opportunities. I don't know what the holdup is for them as far as why they don't want this money, but Overwatch League is doing it. Why is Overwatch League doing it and Riot isn't? That I cannot answer you. I just was only chiming in that yeah, yeah, yeah. the statement that they're not trying is probably not right. But the fact that there's a complete it it was a it was a slaughter in terms of like sponsorship. So, yeah, yeah. If be. if they're trying but failing that poorly and Overwatch League is having that success with a weaker inventory, then you have gross incompetence going on. I could sell LCS super fucking easily. I'm not like amazing in the space, I'm pretty good at my job, but it would not be hard for me to get considerable revenue generated for LCS. There has to be some sort of internal barrier or mandate that is keeping them from selling this property to brands as far as what they're willing to do on the deliverable side, the budget amounts that they're looking for, something is holding them back. There are people that want to give Riot money. It's 
has been the number one esports property in the world for a really, really long period of time. It's not hard to sell that shit. It's really easy. So what's the problem? I want to know. You're asking the wrong guy. I just sit in front of the camera. I mean, I think uh, there's a couple things here. One was this was clearly not a – like th these are not excuses. But I think the explanation would be that this has not been a priority for Riot, that Activision Blizzard probably had a much stronger sales team go to market and probably were much more willing to make compromises on the broadcast. I mean, when you go to, not just in the broadcast, but in the experience, when you go to Overwatch League, I've heard that there's a guy who yells about Sour Patch Kids and gives people out Sour Patch Kids. I think that's totally acceptable, but Riot, who has been obsessed with player experience, uh, and sometimes to their detriment, probably in this case, they probably uh, are reticent to do that. And it, it comes probably from it like Overwatch League was spearheaded so much, we all know, by Bobby Kotick, who's the CEO and sees this as and Overwatch League exists because he saw this as a major source of revenue in the future, right? Like we can make money off of video games, but we can also turn our video game IPs into this source of revenue in all these other different areas. Um, and, and the rumor is that they'll come out with series and all this stuff, but that sports being able to build your own sport is a huge opportunity for them. And so for right out the gate, this was not like a feature that Blizzard was trying to build or Activision Blizzard was trying to build. This was like a, a franchise sports league that generates money. And my frustration is that Riot, I think for a while has known that that was the direction they needed to head but they didn't pivot fast enough in the sales and monetization efforts. I don't know if that's because they had more faith in BamTech apparently sell and well, I know we've got a BamTech caller coming, but I don't know if that's because they had more faith in BamTech's ability to sell I this stuff. I already had the BamTech caller, so I don't know if he disappeared or what. That, so okay. Just for now, whatever. Yeah. So I don't know if they, they felt, sorry, <laughs> Twitch chat blowing up. Um, I don't know if they, they just had all their eggs in that basket. And if it fell through for reasons we will probably never know, and that's what happened. But it is certainly disheartening now to see them make the argument of we need to save money because we're revenue oriented and they don't have this. And by the way, Kelby, like you, you mentioned, you mentioned all of this from a sponsorship perspective. Yeah. But it ignores the very immediate and obvious way to monetize this which is through deepening the revenue streams that they already have uh, yeah, we're with their digital property. one potential avenue. Yeah, sponsorships is one option. They yeah. can, they can, like battle passes, um, I think are, like I play, I play Fortnite, you know, Twitch chat, they're all going to get angry when I say that. I play <laughs> Fortnite, I buy the battle pass, I bought two, all right? I bought two battle passes, Twitch yeah. chat, all right? You can yell at me about it. Um, but they're like a great monetization strategy. Yeah. And I could totally see a world's themed battle pass. Now maybe they're planning on making that stuff, but it is it is frustrating when like the Compendium? Yeah, whatever. Kelby, <laughs> you mentioned something I think earlier before the show started. Uh, we were talking in the, the Skype chat, and I don't think that this. But one thing that you pointed out is that Riot is no longer leading in the space. We've lost Mark. Uh, Riot is no longer leading in the space uh, in this in this category, right? In terms of innovating in the esports space, and it sucks yeah. to see them. Because I I'm a big fan of their esports team. I'm a big fan of what they do, and I think these people are actually like they do really care. They want to do amazing stuff, and, and I know that it's easy to criticize them, but I actually do think that they are trying hard. It's it's so frustrating to see them fall behind in so many different areas in the digital space uh, for monetization options, for sponsorships, etc. It's just very frustrating. Yeah. One one thing I will say is that. So for all of the people responsible for putting these things on at Riot, none of this is any of their fault. Nobody on the production team or organize or I would say with like 95% confidence, n nobody on the production team or the event side or anybody like comes in to like end of the year recap meetings and is like, you know what, next year I'd like to do less. Except I, I for Mark, be maybe. I want I want to yeah, be responsible for less. You know, we want to do it less cool. Like I, th I, th I very firmly believe in my time with working at Riot or not at Riot with Riot 
um, that there are, are a ton of people still in the organization that I really, really like, and they want to do cool shit. Like, uh, that company doesn't get where it's at if you don't care about stuff. But it certainly feeds into the larger narrative about the profitability of the game and what the ownership of Riot Games, uh, the company who ultimately is responsible for writing the checks now, is mandating down. It's like, hey, this is a really big expense for us. And your game, if this is this is pure inference, but this is certainly what it feels like. Because otherwise, why do they change any of this? You know, um, none of these people just like decide to scale it back for for no reason. If you, if you have the money, they'll spend the money to do it right. Um, but it certainly feeds into the narrative that like you know, mm, this game isn't performing super well, and you're on the track to run a deficit. Like we need to scale back costs and start thinking more is a sustainable business instead of a startup, which is directly referenced in this post. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, we have a Chilean caller on the line right now. Horizon. <laughs> I don't know. As we've been ranting for a little bit, but what do you, what do you think about all this stuff? Uh, I know you mentioned it's a disgrace. You, you think team owners should be concerned. Um, what, uh, I don't know. What, what would you like to see change? I mean, uh, I don't know actually what needs to be changed because that's not my job, but um, from... Uh, that's a good answer, the by the side. way. That's always my answer. <laughs> but uh, from the player side actually, of no, things, I, 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 I actually love this game, you know? Uh, and I love the competitive scene, and it's sad to see it scale down. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, like, actually a good choice or, like, it's economically responsible but I don't know. It doesn't bring me hype. It doesn't make me happy for the future of LOL, but I don't know. Hey, yeah, I think. Go, oh, go ahead, Mark. Uh, yeah, this is uh, after that long rant where I had to disappear for a little bit. Hopefully, I'm. You can't be seen on screen with Kelvin. Yeah, ho hopefully, I'll still, still be alive for worlds, everybody. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, well, Vendy has cleared a spot for you today, so I think you're good. <laughs> Jesus. I got to start watching European games? Fuck that. I'll go <laughs> <laughs> Um But I think that's that's what Horizon said at the very end. I think you know how I feel about it for the most part is like maybe it is fiscally responsible. To Kelby's point, there's probably a lot more that could have been done in previous years and stuff like that. And, and even to this day, maybe there's definitely more that can be being done. Um, and so even if this is the right thing for them to be doing in the new franchise model and everything, it still feels fucking bad for a fan. And there's no way to sell this to a fan and not have it taste bad. Yep. Especially when your fans are aware of your, you know, lack of uh, people have been saying, where are the sponsors for years, myself included, but also just like random Reddit threads and stuff like this has been a conversation for a long time. I just want to echo what horizon said a second ago, by the way, which is a great point. Like, I think, look, uh, I'm sure if somebody from Riot is watching this or if they watch the VOD, like, they'll have already turned it off by the point in time when Kelby said uh, that he could sell LCS better than they have. But um, <laughs> Wait, I, that's, why would you be upset at that? Like, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm just, it's, it's, a, it's, a funny, it's a funny remark. Don't worry, Kelby. Yeah. It's, it's a safe place. Um, I, <laughs> just, I was just going to say, uh, but this is all... Like these conversations occur and these opinions occur because like I love this game. I love the scene around it. Like all my friends uh, that I hang out with on a daily basis are attached to this thing in some way or another. And and more broadly, even the people that aren't directly attached, they're part of the esports scene, right? And I I believe that Riot can do this stuff. Um and and beyond my belief in them, I feel like they have a responsibility to. Because they are a trailblazer within the esports industry, they, they were the been. first to do this, and and I think that they're they're falling behind. And I think if they slip, you know, they're going to make it harder for everyone. Like I want to keep working in esports for the next ten to twenty years, and so I need not just them. Like I levied a shit ton of criticism against Overwatch League. I still don't think that their next franchise slots are worth thirty five million or forty or a hundred million or whatever bajillion dollars are asking for now i'm frustrated that valve doesn't do enough to support 
their games, in my opinion. Um, but I'm also frustrated that Riot is failing here, and I think that you know we, I I think it's important for everyone to make smart decisions uh, for for the industry to move forward because Horizon is a fan of League of Legends and League of Legends esports. He wants to be excited about this stuff, and it's hard to be excited about this. And it's also really hard whenever this it just looks like there's it's just a fuck up that's led us to this point. So I don't know. I think I think we probably talked about it. But do you have anything else you want to say, Horizon? Um, I mean, one last point is that even though I don't think that Overwatch League, I don't like Overwatch. I like the game. I don't like watching it. But even though I don't think that the next spots are worth that much, they're doing things better than Riot. And Riot had a head start like four years ago. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of disheartening to see that Riot is falling behind. Yep. Yep, and I feel I hope that they feel disheartened too. That that's the last thing I'll say on this. I don't know if we have another caller, but the last thing I want to say is there was never any ownership in the post that came out today about their failure to monetize. That's what worries me the most is that that whenever stuff like this happens, it's always like, well, this was all part of the plan. And if it was part of the plan, that's worrying to me. But if you fucked up and you didn't handle monetization the way you should have and you didn't take it seriously and you're willing to come out and say this is an area where we failed and we need to get better and we're doubling down, like those statements would give me more faith. Uh, But statements that kind of pretend like it was always the plan to not have the English broadcast out of Korea this year like years ago, like it was on some sort of long-term goal chart. Uh, it sucks. Thanks so much, Ryzen, for your call. Yeah, no Thanks, problem. Thanks. Yeah, really appreciate you calling it. The final depressing capper on all that, of course, is that every empire crumbles. So, you know, <laughs> no, no. This is in a lot of ways is inevitable. Um, listen, Mark, I don't. We don't need to make this about the U.S. All right, I. What I, that was about the U.S. That's just about life, dude. Yeah, like yeah. we were so, Alexander the Great as League Esports for a little while, and then got broken up into yeah. three kingdoms between his sons. I don't really know how that translates metaphorically to this situation, but either way, you know, whatever happens. Yeah. Uh, my father will break up his kingdom among me and my two brothers, and who? So you would give part of your kingdom to double lift. And Kelby, probably, right? And who else? I don't. Think I would I'm give none of it to Peter because that would descend into anarchy <laughs> really quick. He, he's he's the I worst. I made the Caesar. first cut. Yeah, yeah. I almost am jumping timelines here again. I don't know who I'd give the other one to. I'd give the other one to Reddit and just let see what happens. You know, let's <laughs> pop a Reddit. Yeah. 